Well, good morning, and good morning to all of you. Um, I'm here to, to share with you something, something familiar and something new. I'm here today representing Together Georgia. And Together Georgia is an association composed of over 60 providers and growing. We have a 50-year history, formerly known as the Georgia Association for Homes and Services for Children. Together Georgia is striving to be a unified voice for all providers across the state. Our goal today is to begin to articulate to you how we, the providers, believe Georgia should move forward for, to provide the best services for, needed for our children and families. Our providers offer Georgia's most vulnerable children and families a full continuum of services, in commu including community-based services, family preservation, foster care, both basic and therapeutic, group homes, those in the community as well as those in residential settings, psychiatric residential treatment facilities, and others. You've heard from Faith Bridge previously. You'll hear from Youth Villages later today. These are just several of the members um, in the association known as Together Georgia. Our current executive director, Ron Scroggie, apologizes for being unable to be with you today, but he's keeping his commitment to his family to care for his four grandchildren while his daughter recovers from surgery. Ron has worked for 34 years in Georgia, 23 of which he spent overseeing Inner Harbor, a large residential facility in Douglasville, and the past two years he spent as the DFACS director. My name is Allison Evans, and I'm very new to, to Georgia. Um, I started on June 1st as the president and CEO of the Methodist Home for Children, which has its headquarters central in, in centralized in Macon. We have 133 residential beds. We provide community-based counseling, intensive family visitation services throughout the South Georgia area. But I think perhaps the reason why the newbie is here speaking to you um, is because I spent the last 28 years in Florida and working with the Florida Sheriff's Youth Ranches, which is uh, residential group homes located throughout the state of Florida. So I have definitely been a part of that entire privatization uh, model down there from the earliest days when Governor Bush uh, brought it to, into fruition uh, through as recently as, as this past May. So I think that that's why I got tapped to be here in front of you today. Um, I want to tell you a little bit about the strength of our provider family. And I am going to give you some examples from the Methodist Children's Home because that's what I'm the most familiar with. But I'm sure that some of the things that I share could be applied to many of the providers who join with us in Together Georgia. Uh, Georgia, there's been a private-public partnership in Georgia for many years, and the strength that those providers bring to the table is that Georgia, typically those providers are nonprofits, and they have a lot of experience in the private fundraising realm, and they bring those dollars to the care of our children. Um, more often than not, a significant portion of the operational dollars and nearly all of the capital costs are provided by this, this network of our individual donors and our corporate partners um, and, and some of our foundations. I can give you two quick examples there from the Methodist Home. We just received word last week that we're going to get a significant grant from a foundation in the St. Mary's area that is going to substantially fund the sanctuary model of care, which is the model of care we're bringing to Georgia to deal with traumatized children. And that's a very exciting thing, but we certainly couldn't do it without the partnership with this foundation. Other foundations underwrite many, many of the initiatives um, and the innovative ideas that providers bring to the table. But perhaps a, a much smaller example happened at the children's home this past week. This much smaller example has to do with the number of, of volunteers and small gifts that come to our providers. Methodist Children's Home has what we call a clothing room, donated goods for our children to, to use. And uh, we had three girls in care, and they left us in, in August. They were reunited with their biological father. On Tuesday, they went to court. By Tuesday afternoon, they were no longer with their biological father. The nine-year-old said to me, Miss Allison, they called our grandparents. They don't want us. And so they called the Methodist Children's Home. And because these girls had been with us in the past, we opened absolutely, bring, bring our girls back to us. The girls got up that morning going to court. They didn't pack a bag. Hmm. They didn't think about pajamas. But because of the resources of this provider, the Methodist Children's Home, we were able to take them right upstairs, let them go through this little boutique, boutique pick out all the things that they needed and wanted. And the oldest one, which was 16, 
she walked out and she said, I feel like I'm back home. Mm -hmm. yeah. So these are some of the small and large ways that providers absolutely enhance the quality of care that we see for Georgia's children. Another example of that, one of our other partners, Mac, who you'll hear from later, um, uh, called us about a youngster who needed some care, 16-year-old, uh, 16-year-old Raekwon. Now we were looking, he'd been through several placements, we were kind of looking and a little concerned, but there was something that we needed. And uh, we talked to our MAC partners and they stepped up and said, absolutely, we'll take care of that in order to facilitate this placement for this child. And that gives you an example of the partnership. Raekwon, at 16, is six foot nine, 300 pounds. Raekwon does not fit in the typical bed that you might see in a children's home. But again, one call to our partners and they said, absolutely, we're going to take care of the cost. You go get the bed. Let's just make sure Ray Quan is in a safe place for him. I um, think the so Falcons might want to talk. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, he's not as much sports oriented as you might think with his bulk and his size. What I found, I've, I've seen him twice on two different weekends out um, helping to find foster homes for animals. Well. So he's got a sensitivity for critters. Um, <laughs> Providers also provide, offer quality care. Most of them are usually nationally accredited. Again, the Methodist Home is nationally accredited by the Council on Accreditation, but also EGLE accredited, which is a faith-based accreditation. Providers um, have regular and routine assessments and evaluations that are made by state agencies, and they show very strong outcomes. Uh, again, using the Methodist Home as an example on that quarterly-based performance thing, we, we all of our sites in South Georgia rank 96% or better. Um, throughout every quarter. Okay. Um, in a recent Medicaid audit, we ranked 90, we had a 94 percentile when the state average was 84 percentile and for an entire year of billing we had to, to pay back $800. So the quality of what we do and the quality of what we do both on the child care side and on the accountability level um, is, is amazing. Uh, our providers also have a unique blend of leadership. Those folks who are in your com communities and your constituents, whether they be through a faith-based community or, or through just a, a straight community outreach, they have engaged the local community leaders in support of um, the work that they are doing. And finally, they provide a ro robust training for our staff members. Um, we, we believe strongly we are committed to keeping children safe. And you see that in every aspect of what your providers do. Together, Georgia, this newly named ent entity, welcomes the opportunity in partnership with all of our child and family stakeholders to improve the services most needed today. Alongside the state, providers can offer much constructive feedback for improving our current systems, particularly centered around safety. It should be noted that DFACS and the provider community have worked hard over the past seven years as resources have continued to be reduced due to the recession to keep our most vulnerable children safe. We, continue, we plan to continue this collegial efforts as we look at these upcoming um, transformational issues that you just heard from Melissa, including the new juvenile code rewrite with the Chins Amendment, the new foster care CMO carve-out that will be overseen by Amerigroup, and the new 24-7 defects call center. All of those have been uh, brought to the table with little to no investment startups, and we believe it is very critical that we keep our eye on the ball as we successfully roll out these new initiatives that are already in the pipeline. The private providers in Georgia have had a long history of working alongside public entities, some of which include DFACS, DJJ, DBHDD, DCH, DOE, DECAL, and DPH. We need to continue the bre to break down any silos that may exist, and we pledge to work together to make the needed improvements for those children who are most in need. For example, one of the areas that we think that could use some consistent um, or some additional improvement is the way that ORCC and OPM have dual monitoring systems, many of them addressing some of the same standards. We feel like that's a duplication of the state's resources as well as the provider resources to sit through both of those reviews, but we are working together with them to provide consolidated ways that they can come in, feel that they've taken a good look at our organizations, getting the information they need without us having on, on, on day one, week one, having somebody come in and provide that oversight, and on week two, day three, having to do the same thing all over again for another state organization and agency. Um, Georgia was ranked number 12 in the country. Going from number 30 
to number 12 in a six year period is fantastic. It really is amazing and, and Georgia should be and is commended for that growth. We have been going in the right direction. Some of those statistics you've already heard, reducing the number of foster care, children in foster care from 14,000 in 2007 to about 7,800 currently. Child deaths are no longer hidden away from critical reviews, but are individually analyzed for the lessons learned to be shared with all involved so that no child in Georgia dies in vain, no matter the cause. Together, the private providers and defects created and implemented performance-based placement agreements, which you heard about earlier, an instrument that provides a quarterly grade for every provider. The grade is formulated on the result of over 20 regularly monitored outcomes. These grades, along with a matching tool recently created in, again, a collaboration with defects and the providers, assist case managers in making the most appropriate referrals. And isn't that key? the most appropriate referral for that child on the very front end. Another suggestion that we might have would be to improve access by the providers to the state's information system, also known as SHINES. This will continue, able to us to continue to deliver measurable, accountable results to the citizens of Georgia. Together, Georgia welcomes the opportunity to work with you in formulating recommendations on future improvements for the children and families and the providers that they serve that we serve. Over the next few months, we will work with our members on the issues that your work group identifies to provide you with our position on those requested issues. Thank you so much for opening up this critical conversation so together we can keep Georgia's children safe. And in closing, I just want to add one more comment from one of our children. Again, being fairly new, I've been attending a lot of things, and uh, I, I had the opportunity to sit in a chapel service with our children the night before school started this year. And most of the prayer requests that went out were things like, I hope I get a good teacher, to hope I get an easy teacher. Um, but one prayer request stood out. The young man, 12 years old, said, I pray that kids like me matter. Mm -hmm. It's simple. I pray that kids like me matter. Thank you so much for stepping up, for responding to the Lieutenant Governor's call, and making sure that kids like him matter. And you're hearing their voice through the collective providers who've been providing service to these children for so many years.